More and more people today are concerned about emergency power, and a portable generator can supply that, but it can only back up the things that are plugged directly into the generator. On the other hand, a Generac automatic standby generator powers entire circuits and everything on them. For example, if you choose to back up the family room, the generator will power the TV, stereo, lamps, ceiling fans, and lights. Select the kitchen, and you'll be able to use your stove, refrigerator, microwave, overhead lights, and all of the outlets. Plus, a Generac automatic standby unit is on the job 24-7. Just like your central air conditioner, the generator works automatically when you need it and shuts off when you don't. It constantly monitors the utility, so when the power goes out, the generator starts itself and delivers power to your home within seconds. When the utility is back online, the generator shuts itself off until the next outage. It runs off your home's existing natural gas or LP fuel supply, so unlike a portable generator, it never needs to be refueled. Once a week, it will automatically run a brief self-test to ensure that everything is working properly when you need it. With the Generac Standby Generator, you can enjoy peace of mind and never feel powerless knowing that your home and family are protected even when you're not there. Equipment to lift the generator into place. Use nylon lifting straps and connect them to the lifting eyes on each corner of the base frame. Before moving the generator, make sure the lifting equipment you'll be using has sufficient capacity to safely handle the weight of the generator. Carefully inspect the generator for any shipping damage and remove the bolts holding the composite pad to the pallet. Carefully set the generator onto the prepared gravel surface, making sure the gravel bed extends a few inches beyond the composite pad all the way around. Check to make sure the generator is level within one half inch all around and adjust the gravel base if necessary. If you're using a concrete mounting pad, secure the base frame of the generator to the pad with appropriately sized masonry bolts or other fasteners specified by local code. Connect an approved ground strap to the grounding lug on the base frame and to an approved earth ground or grounding rod as specified by local regulations. This is a good time to check the engine oil. If necessary, add enough of the recommended oil to bring the level up to the full mark on the dipstick. Be careful not to overfill the crankcase. The generator you'll be installing was configured for natural gas operation at the factory. Switching over to LP Vapor is a simple operation. On models with the V-twin engine, you simply flip the fuel selection switch from natural gas to LP. The location of the switch and the exact procedure might vary slightly from model to model, so always check your owner's manual. The process is different on models with a single cylinder engine. If the battery is already installed, disconnect both cables. Disconnect the two wires from the solenoid on top of the regulator and remove the fuel hose from the outlet port. Now remove the brass fitting for the fuel hose in port 2 and the steel plug in port 1. Then. Install the brass fitting in port 1 and the steel plug in port 2. Use a quality pipe sealant on the threaded fittings to reduce the possibility of gas leaks. Replace the fuel hose and clamp and reconnect the wires to the solenoid. Finally, insert the plastic plug that came with the generator into the 3 quarter inch hole on the bottom of the air cleaner base. Both natural gas and LP vapor are highly volatile substances, so strict adherence to all safety procedures, codes, standards, and regulations is essential. Local gas codes vary widely, so a certified plumber familiar with local codes and regulations should make all gas line connections. Most applications will require a manual shutoff valve on the fuel line. When running gas lines, Always use AGA-approved gas pipe. Use a quality pipe sealant or joint compound on all threaded fittings to reduce the possibility of gas leaks. 
When connecting the gas line to the generator, use a short section of UL listed or AGA approved flexible fuel line in accordance with local regulations. The purpose of the flexible fuel line is to ensure that vibration from the generator does not cause a gas leak at one of the connection points, so it's important that the line be installed with as few bends as possible. Never bend the flexible fuel line to avoid using an elbow. Bending the flexible line decreases its ability to absorb vibrations and defeats its purpose. When all connections are complete, purge the lines and check all connections for leaks in accordance with applicable fuel gas codes. Check the gas pressure at the secondary regulator to make sure there's enough pressure for proper generator operation. The local gas supplier is responsible for ensuring adequate pressure, so if the pressure is too low, or if it's greater than 14 inches of water column, contact the gas supplier. You'll need to check gas pressure again with the generator under full load, so leave the meter hooked up. When you've finished checking the gas pressure, close the manual shutoff valve. Your distributed load center transfer switch came with a 30-foot pre-wired flexible conduit and a pre-wired external connection box, so they're simple to install. First, determine where the flexible conduit will pass through the house and drill a one and three-quarter inch hole. Then, feed one end of the conduit through the hole from inside the house. Next, remove the knockout in the bottom right corner of the external connection box. Remove the threaded lock nut from the coupling on the conduit. With the conduit sticking out just far enough to properly fit into the connection box, seal the hole with silicone caulk. Don't forget to caulk the hole inside the house as well. Now feed the wires and the threaded end of the conduit through the back of the connection box and use the appropriate fasteners to mount the connection box so that it completely covers the hole in the wall. Slip the lock nut over the wires and tighten securely. Connect all wires to the lugs in the connection box, black to black, red to red, and white to white. Attach the green ground wire to the ground screw and connect the two ends of the four-pin plug connector. Replace the protective cover plate and lock the connection box. There are a few basic procedures and precautions that apply to any type of transfer switch. The first step is to make sure utility power is shut off to the main panel before starting. To ensure you're working with the latest information available, carefully read the installation guide that came with your switch. The distributed load center switch must be mounted close enough to the main distribution panel to accommodate the two-foot pre-wired conduit. When choosing a location for the switch, make sure no water or corrosive substances can drip onto the enclosure. Unpack and inspect the switch for shipping damage. Never mount a transfer switch that shows any evidence of damage. Carefully lift the switch into position protecting against impact at all times. Using the appropriate fasteners, mount the switch vertically to a rigid support structure, making sure all mounting points are level. If necessary, use washers behind the mounting holes to level the enclosure. To ensure safe and proper operation, all wiring must be of the correct size and type and must conform to all applicable codes, standards, and regulations. Refer to the Technical Manual and the National Electric Code for additional information. As with any product, design changes can occur over time, so you should always refer to the wiring diagram in the installation guide for the required connections and safety precautions. The transfer switch you'll be using is an open transition switch. Open transition switches prevent electrical feedback between the generator and the utility by only allowing load circuits to be connected to one power supply at a time. Making the actual connections in the distribution panel is a simple procedure, but there are a couple of things you need to be aware of before you start. 
Your transfer switch was pre-wired at the factory, and all of the wires you'll need are already in the two-foot flexible conduit. Each wire is color-coded, so you can see which circuit it's connected to in the transfer switch. There are two different single-phase configurations commonly used in home wiring. In one, each circuit has its own neutral wire. Typically, all of the power wires in this configuration will be black. The other uses three conductor cable consisting of two 120-volt power leads and a single neutral wire. You can often recognize three conductor cable because one power lead will be red and the other black. With three conductor wiring, two 120-volt circuits will often share the same neutral wire. Unless you're a licensed electrician, you should either move both of the circuits that share the neutral or don't move either of them. When moving two circuits with a shared neutral, they should be connected to adjacent positions, one above the other, in the transfer switch. That will assure that the two hot wires are on separate phases and will maintain their relationship to neutral. Select the first circuit you want to back up. Remove the power lead from the breaker and reconnect it to a matching breaker in the transfer switch. Always use UL listed wire nuts to secure the connection. Make sure the circuit you're moving is protected by the same size breaker in the switch. 15 amp circuits must be connected to 15 amp breakers and 20 amp circuits to 20 amp breakers. For every circuit you move to the transfer switch, you must connect the white neutral wire in the distribution panel. You'll need to install a double pole breaker in the distribution panel to protect the transfer switch. The required amp rating of the breaker depends on which transfer switch you're using, so refer to the installation guide before purchasing the breaker. Install the breaker in two adjacent empty slots, one above the other, in the main panel. It might be necessary to reposition some of the remaining breakers in order to free up two adjacent slots. If you're not completely comfortable with how to do this, contact a licensed electrician. To install the breaker, connect the red and black power leads and snap the breaker into place. Connect the white wire to the neutral bar. Connect the green wire to the large lug on the ground terminal block. Finally, close the main breaker and check to make certain that normal utility voltage at the transfer switch is correct. Refer to NFPA 70E for the safety equipment required when working inside a live transfer switch. If your generator did not come with a battery, you'll need to purchase one. A list of recommended batteries is included in the owner's manual. When installing the battery, it's important to follow all of the procedures and safety precautions detailed in the installation guide. Now it's time to conduct some operational tests to make sure everything is working properly. First, open the generator's main circuit breaker and put the mode switch in the OFF position. Shut off utility power at the distribution panel and open all of the emergency circuit breakers in the transfer switch. Locate the transfer handle and insert the metal end into the slot in the main contactor assembly. Pull the handle down to move the main contacts to the standby power or generator position. Never operate the transfer switch manually when loads are connected. Put the generator's mode switch in manual and wait for the engine to start. Allow the engine to warm up, then switch the generator's main circuit breaker to the on position. The generator is now supplying electricity to the transfer switch but is not carrying any load. Using a multimeter, check to be sure that voltage and frequency from the generator is correct. If line-to-line -line voltage is not 240, refer to the installation guide for the proper adjustment procedure. If neutral-to-line voltage is not 120, check the neutral connection between the generator and the transfer switch. 
switch the generator's main breaker off and put the mode switch in the off position to shut down the generator. Next, make sure the double pole circuit breaker you installed in the main panel is in the off position. Use the transfer handle to move the main contacts in the transfer switch to the up or utility position. Now close the double pole breaker in the distribution panel by switching it to on. Next, switch the generator's main breaker to the on position and put the mode switch in auto. Open the main breaker in the distribution panel to shut off utility power. The generator should start and, after the appropriate delay, transfer power to the generator. Close the main service breaker and make sure that power transfers back to the utility. After the generator has shut down, open the main breaker again to shut off the utility. When the generator is running and is supplying power to the transfer switch, close the breakers in the transfer switch one at a time until the generator has accepted the entire load. With the generator carrying the entire emergency load, recheck gas pressure to verify that it's at the same level it was before you started the generator. Close the main breaker. After a few seconds, the transfer switch will restore utility power. The generator will continue to run to allow the engine to cool down, then shut itself off. Now unhook the gas meter and reinstall the port plug on the regulator. If everything worked properly, the system is now ready for automatic operation. Shut off utility power one last time. The generator should start. And after the appropriate delay, the entire load should transfer to the generator. Close the main breaker and make sure the transfer switch restores utility power to the home. Allow the generator to cool down and shut itself off. Now you need to make sure the automatic exercise function is working properly. With the mode switch in auto, press the exerciser switch and hold it down for at least 10 seconds. Then release. The generator should start automatically within a few seconds. The generator will run for about 12 minutes and then shut itself down. Once set, the unit will exercise each week at the same time, so don't forget to show the owner how to set this function on the day and time he wants the unit to exercise. If the battery is ever disconnected for any reason, the exercise time will have to be reset. If your generator is equipped with the low speed exercise feature, it was enabled at the factory and no adjustment is needed. As you can see, this installation is fairly simple. Just follow all of the instructions that come with the generator, observe all safety procedures, applicable codes and regulations, and you shouldn't have any problems.